Continuing on with part 2 of the update 5.11 new refines, this time we're covering some Ratana, Legendary Hector, Legendary Tiki, and Legendary Marth. If you missed part 1 where we talked about Kaze, Linus, Cliff, and Hellbindi, I have links to that video in the description and in card. Now for part 2, we have a lot to cover, so let's get going. Starting off with a bit of a breather before the storm, we have Summer Tana, this month's seasonal refine. Tana is a flying red mage and had the fruit of Idun Tome, which pretty much just had guidance slash flyer guidance built into it. Thankfully, it got some nice buffs. It still grants plus 3 speed and now allies with it in 2 spaces can move to a space within 2 spaces of Tana. Additionally, at the start of combat, if the foe's HP is greater than 75%, grants plus 5 attack and speed during combat. So right off the bat, the Guidance effect has been buffed to a 2 space range. This is a bit nuts as it allows Tana to act like a huge mobility tool for her entire team. Earlier this year, Tiny Tana can move to 2 spaces around her teammates and now Summer Tana is doing the reverse. Along with the Super Guidance effect, Tana will get a nice plus 5 attack and speed boost against healthy foes. Now for the special refine, grants plus 4 attack and speed to allies within 2 spaces during combat. If Tana is within 2 spaces of an ally, she gets the same plus 4 attack and speed during combat. This is basically a joint drive attack and joint drive speed skills smashed into one. Tana will buff any of her allies who take advantage of her super guidance effect and if Tana is near them, she gets the same buffs. In total, Tana went from a basic plus 3 speed boost to getting an extra plus 9 attack and speed to work with. For a supportive weapon, this is a pretty nice addition and Tana has okay attack and speed stats for a flying mage. She can do some good damage, but her defenses are pretty low, so yeah, you need to be careful of taking counterattacks. In general, Summer Tana should be used for her team mobility shenanigans, combine this with other flying units or dancers for tons of unpredictable movements, and you can have a very annoying defense team. In addition to the mobility, Tana does get plus 4 attack and speed as well. You can easily stack more of those stats to empower an attacker. Similar to Kanze, Summer Tana can do decent damage if left untouched, but she gets no defensive help from her refine. Since the A slot is generally not support based, you can just go with any attack and speed boost and skills. Tana can run attack and speed catch 4, attack and speed solo. She does have attack and speed push 3, so you can upgrade to the tier 4 if you want. Or you can run a unity skill since she does need to stay within 2 spaces of her team, generally. Desperation is also fine to avoid multiple hits, and it's the cheapest B skill option. You could try things like Sturdy Impact for survivability, but I don't know if it's, well, if it's gonna save Tana without other buffs. If you want mobility for Tana herself, you can run Flyer Formation or Aerobatics. Tana does not get warping herself, so these skills can let her move around the team first, and then you can let her guidance take effect to ferry her team further. There is also Far Trace, but you do need the remaining movement to use Kanto. You could stack the debuffs with a Rain C skill for more damage, but I do think Tana may want to focus on support more. Joint Drive C skills are basically made to stack with her refine. You can even slap a Drive Attack or Speed Sacred Seal on. Some other options include Gold or Ward Flyers, Hone or Fortify Flyers, Joint Distant Guard, or a good old Tactic Buff, or even or you can try the Super Rare Snake B skills. For the most part, if you just want to use Tana for her Guidance effect, then she can get away with a very budget build, something like Fury, Desperation, and Double Drive Attack boss. Summer Tana does have a lot of potential, but it does it's going to come down to abusing her mobility shenanigans. She is definitely a good reason to have the Keeper around if you're facing her on a team. Next, we are moving on to the Legendary Refines. First up is Legendary Hector, who got his remix boss last batch. Hector got Ostia's Pulse 2 and has been waiting for the Thunder Armads Refine. With this, we can now have, or we now have three Hector Refines, and for some unexplainable reason, the OG Hector and Armads still don't have one. Now, for Thunder Armads, it got a nice update. It still grants plus three defense, and if Hector is within three spaces of an ally, inflict minus five attack and defense on the foe during combat, and the foe cannot make a follow up attack. So, Thunder Armas gets an update to its condition, and it's super simple now. Having an ally within 3 spaces is very easy, especially for an army unit, and Hector even gets some in combat debuffs now. For the special refine, if the foe initiates combat, or if the foe has minus 75% HP, inflict another minus 5 attack and defense, and reduce damage from the foe's first attack by 40%. So, Thunder Armands is actually kind of similar to Hellbindi's Refine. Hector inflicts minus 10 attack and defense, and he prevents a follow-up attack. Hector will also get a nice 40% damage reduction for first attacks, though. While Legend of Hector is meant to be an enemy phase tank, he can proc all of these effects on the player phase if you wish. This will give him some protection, which is pretty nice. A large amount of arm units have been getting one-time damage reduction effects, and while Hector's isn't as large as Gustav's or Pirate Surter's, he also prevents a follow-up attack. Ideally, Hector is going to take 40% less damage on one hit only, and he's going to have that minus 10 attack and defense, which makes him quite sturdy. 
In addition, Osseus Pulse 2 now gives plus 6 defense and field buffs for Hector and his team, so that's just more tanking power on top. Besides that, Osseus Pulse also provides times pulse for Hector, which is nice, but its main draw is that Hector can support his entire team from anywhere on the map each turn, assuming you meet the team conditions. That is quite valuable, and the times pulse effect can open up some unique strategies, especially for units who can't normally get access to that skill. With the remix boss, Hector also got Crafty Fighter 3 for free. He also has Distant Counter naturally, of course, and for the most part, this new base kit works quite well. Hector's gonna have DC, Guard, Quicker Pulse, Fall Prevention, and 40% damage reduction for one hit. With Osseus Pulse 2, you supply Demon's Rise Field Boss and Times Pulse, and that can combo or you can combo this with the Steady Breath Sacred Seal to let Hector retaliate with an instant bonfire proc. You can also run Aether, and I think this is a pretty solid build without needing to get other skills. With that said, Thunder Armaments can be used without Osteus Pulse. It's a great C skill because of the team support, but save C skills are just so dang powerful. Refined Thunder Armaments can make Hector a nasty near, near save tank. You could run far save too, but I do think save tanks want their A skill to run one of the better tank abilities. For example, near save Hector can run Crafty Fighter with close defense 4. You get more defense and res and buff neutralization in case enemies do double Hector, and even then Crafty Fighter does provide guard to slow specials. I think Legend Hector can go without or can go with or without Osteus Pulse, or you can go with a save skill thanks to this refine. For some other skills, Hector could instead run the tier 3 dual stance plus sick, or slick fighter combo on a save build. This is going to get you guard some attack in the build and you can neutralize stat penalties. It's fine, but Hector already gets crafty fighter for free, so I don't think a lot of people are going to do that. Special fighter could also work with Osteus pulse, with times pulse plus error, with times pulse working every player phase, you can lower bonfire to a control cooldown, and special fighter is then going to let you charge it up in one hit. Plus, you're going to keep guard in this build. Obviously, you either need to run the Crooker Post Sacred Seal, or you're no longer going to have follow-up attacks. I will also mention Bold Fighter, just because Thunder Iron Man's now gives Hector an extra 10 damage to work with. I think it's clear looking at Hector wants to be the more traditional DC tank or save tank, but you can use Bold Fighter if you really want. Overall, Thunder Iron Man's definitely got a nice upgrade. No longer will it be in the shadow of Momori's weapon, and Osteus Pulse gives Hector some nice and simple buffs, assuming you meet its team condition. I still think Brave Hector's refine reigns supreme, but Legendary Hector is perfectly good to go. Our next refine is going to be for Legendary Tiki. Tiki's Divine Mist is a distant counter weapon with dragon effectiveness, so it received no changes to its base effect. For its refine, at the start of combat, if Tiki has 125% HP, she gets plus 4 all stance and inflicts penalty on foe's attack equal to 25 or equal to 75% of total bonuses on Tiki's defense and res during combat. Okay, so basic plus 4 stat boost, and Tiki is going to inflict attack debuffs based on how many defense plus res field buffs she has on her. If she has plus 6 defense and plus 6 res for a total of 12 field buffs, she would inflict minus 9 attack and or minus 9 attack on the foe. Pretty fun stuff, and Tiki has a sort of unusual stat spread for an army unit. She has pretty decent base speed and relatively spread out stats, so minus 9 attack certainly is good here for her. With this update, Tiki will also receive remix buffs in the form of With Everyone 2, her unique C skill. At the start of the turn, if unit is within 2 spaces of an ally, grants plus 6 defense and rise to Tiki and allies within 2 spaces for 1 turn. Additionally, if a ranged foe initiates combat against an ally within 2 spaces of Tiki, trigger savior on that unit. If Tiki triggers savior, she also gains plus for all stats during combat. In simpler terms, with everyone extends its buffing range to two spaces and Tiki now has far save 3 built in. That is real nasty. She has a distant counter weapon with range adaptive damage and can now get plus 8 to all stats, plus 60 with some from field buffs, and then inflict minus attack on the foe. Legendary Tiki is going to be an absolute menace if you cannot deal with all these stats. It's clear that with everyone gives her the defense from field buffs so that the refine can then turn that into attack debuffs for her. Throw in far save with more stat boost and well Tiki's got some good all around utility. In addition to far save, Tiki got Slick Fighter for free in the B slot as part of the remix boss. Slick Fighter is Cooker Post with stat penalty neutralization. Generally, it's a good trait to have, but if you don't have debuffs, then it's just quicker pose. Tiki does also have Fierce Breath, which kind of matches with Far Safe and DC. She gets more cooldown charges, she can neutralize debuffs, she can double even without winning the speed battle, and she has Far Safe to intercept ranged attackers. 
all of this is good, but there are a couple issues. For example, if Tiki's defense or res buffs get neutralized, she loses a good chunk of tankiness. If an enemy has low attack and defense, they would get rid of the plus 6 field buff, and now Tiki only has plus 6 res. 75% of 6 is rounded down to 4, so now Tiki only inflicts minus 4 attack. We went from plus 6 defense and minus 9 attack to just minus 4 attack, which is a loss of 11 HP. The same can be said for res from attacking mages, and then you got units like Legendary Julia with her dragon effective tome and her B skill that neutralizes all field buffs kind of not great for Tiki in that case. I think if we're going to focus on far save, then Tiki's going to need a little more tanking power. You may want an A skill like Distant Defense 4 or a Tier 3 Dual Stance. Adding Guard or Buff Neutralization is really good. And while Slick Fighter is cool, I kind of feel like Guard from Crafty Fighter is more valuable. It depends though. As for Special Fighter, while well, Tiki is actually somewhat fast, especially with the extra stats now, she's sort of like a stat checking unit where if you don't match her speed, you're in real trouble and kind of screwed since Tiki's going to be tanky and she's going to W and she's just charging specials so fast. This can fall apart versus super fast units since Tiki does not prevent any fall up attacks though. She does come with Bold Fighter in her kit already, and this was to run the classic Breath A skill plus Bold Fighter combo. It's a mixed phase playstyle, and while with everyone sort of pushes Tiki into an enemy phase far safe playstyle now, you could try to mix and match. For example, you could run mixed phase stat boosters like Unity A skills or add in some Bond seals. I feel like Legend Tiki needs a bit of time to figure out. I'm not sure if there's a clear set build at the moment, and you could spec for a lot of different things like full defense and res stacking, or you could try to add more speed. As an armored dragon, Tiki also has the option to run Dragon Wall, Dragon's Ire, and Dragon's Wrath. I think Dragon Wall is the most interesting option because it's damage reduction, and Tiki gets a good chunk of res from her in combat buffs and the res field buff. For Dragon's Ire, it's potentially better than Slick Fighter since again, if no debuffs are active, Slick Fighter is just quick repost. Dragon's Ire adds the partial follow-up effect to ensure Tiki, or Tiki doubles, and she, is on, or she isn't only reliant on guaranteed follow-ups since she does have some decent speed. Last, we have Dragon's Wrath, the new option. Unfortunately, I don't think it's better than the Armored Beast skills available. Maybe if Dragon's Wrath work on both phases, it'd be more interesting, but it is an enemy phase only skill. That works nicely with far save in theory, but you could also run Dragon Wall for just more damage reduction. There are a lot of choices left on the table for Tiki. All in all, I would say Legend of Tiki is very scary if left unchecked. She can be countered by buff neutralization or panic, but if you let Tiki buff up, then she's going to be real sturdy and she has some speed too. She even makes her whole team tankier, so you need to watch out for that as well. I think simply getting far safer free is already amazing for general usage with Tiki, but you're going to need to add other premium skills to really synergize with the playstyle. Personally, I think she really wants guard in some way if you're going to go the full tank route. I'm interested to see what people do with Legend Tiki, but I'm also not looking forward to fighting a fairly merged one in the arena. So I feel like some people are feeling a little down on Tiki's Refine and, well, one of the problems is probably because of our last Refine. Despite getting some neat skills in the same remix update as Legend Tiki, we have Legendary Marth and Hot damn, this dude is out for blood. Legendary Marth was already basically a hard dragon counter thanks to his B skill, but now he's going after everyone. Let's first talk about Exalted Falchion though. It did get extra base effects. Exalted Falchion is effective against dragons, grants a flat plus 3 speed, and gave Marth bonus doubler 3. In addition, it now states, at start of combat, if Marth has 150% HP or has a bonus active on him, grants plus 4 stats or plus 4 to all stats during combat. So aside from bonus doubler, Marth gets extra stats, nice and simple. For the find portion, if Marth initiates combat or is within two spaces of an ally, grant another plus four at all stats and bonus to attack, speed, defense, and res during combat equal to the current penalty on each of those stats times two. So aside from a basically free plus eight all stats, Marth adds a spectrum unity effect to his falchion. This is actually just gross because any stat debuffs get turned around. Minus 6 attack turns into plus 12 attack in combat for a total of plus 6 attack overall. Now the real powerful part of Mart's Mirror bus doesn't just come from his Binding Shield 2, but he also got Shining Emblem from Brave Marth. This special is 
very disgusting and Legend of Marth is literally stealing it from his recently released CYL alt. The main part of Shining Emblem is the plus 6 to all stats from Marth if he starts the turn near any allies. With bonus doubler, that plus 6 turns into plus 12 overall. Legend of Marth will literally come out with plus 20 to all stats just for meeting his conditions, and with Unity in effect, any debuffs just make him stronger. The other part of Shining Emblem is that Marth buffs his allies with plus 6 attack as well, and the 35% speed stat adds extra damage, which is basically Regno Astra. After combat, if Shining Emblem does proc, Marth then gives everyone on the team plus 6 to all stats. Team support is great, but we're focusing on Marth only this time because this man will be real deadly thanks to Binding Shield 2. This, bi or this B skill did not really receive any much changes, however it only used to work on dragons. Now Marth can use it on any unit type. If Marth has more than 5 speed than the foe or if they are a dragon, Marth makes a guaranteed follow up attack and the foe cannot counter attack or make a follow up attack. This skill has always been nasty, it, but it only worked on one class type. Now Marth just needs to win a speed check and he can abuse it for any fight. Binding Shield is basically a breaker skill combined with a fire sweep. On initiations, Marth can slap you two times without being touched. If you attack him first, he can still double you and you can only attack once. Considering our man just got plus 20 to all stats just for existing, it is going to be really tough to stop Marth. With Unity on the refine, Marth even gets some countermeasures against Panic. Panic is going to weaken him and disable bonus doubler, but Marth will still gain some stats back because Unity reverts the panic or the panic buffs in combat. Instead of plus 20, he would just get plus 14 to all stats effectively, which is still kind of gross. Instead of panic, you really want to neutralize Marth's field buffs and not debuff him. Debuffing him is straight up bad. Panic weakens him a little, but full buff neutralization will only give Marth plus 8 all stats from the extra effects on Exalted Falchion. In terms of playstyles, Marth is absolutely going to demolish dragons if left untouched. He immediately gives himself bonus doubler with plus 6 field buffs active, and then you got the plus 8 from Exalted Falchion. He can initiate on a dragon, hit them twice without being countered, and that should be it. Even if they don't die, Marth should still deal free damage. Now, with Binding Show 2, Marth can do this against any opponent if he outspeeds them. Because he has Fire Sweep and buffs himself, Attack at Speed Ideal 4 is actually a really good choice for Legendary Marth. He may be one of the best users of this skill because he can stay at 4 HP with self buffing. With the guaranteed follow up attack, Marth can punch through follow up prevention skills like on Hector or Hell Bindi. To make this build even nastier, you can add Times Pulse. Legendary Marth will not have a 1 cooldown Shining Emblem, but Times Pulse can get it to 1 cooldown each player phase. This allows Marth to proc. Shining Emblem in 2 hits, which is really good since he does prevent a counter attack. In general, while attack and speed ideal is pretty neat, Marth really just wants any attack and speed increasing skills. Attack and speed solo, Swiss Sparrow, or Surge Sparrow are fine options. Bonus Delber can work, but this makes Marth super weak to panic and lulls. As for Unity skills, well, Marth can do similar things as Fallen Ike. Unity skills technically do stack. For example, if Marth has minus 6 attack on him as a debuff, Exalted Falchion Unity's effect will give him plus 12 attack. If you had attack and speed Unity, that would give you another plus 12 attack. You get 24 attack, minus 6 from the debuff for a net gain of plus 18 attack. We basically went from minus 6 attack to plus 18. The only issue with this, or with Unity skills is the range condition. It would be fun, but I do think Marth likes to initiate thanks to Binding Shield, so you're gonna have to be careful with that. Now, speaking of Fallen Ike, Legendary Marth could add Distant Counter to his kit. If you do that, you basically get Chaos Ragnar with bonus doubler and a bunch of stats. Legendary Marth is not going to be able to run a dodge B skill, however, Binding Shield already has some defensive abilities to by preventing a follow up attack. It even gives Marth quicker pulse, although technically he already needs to win the speed check, so really the free follow up is just there to counter things like impact skills. Like together, this is kind of like having no follow up, sort of. Now, letting Binding Shield work on any unit really makes Legend of Marth a super neat unit. You must focus on speed though, so you gotta be careful when fighting other speedsters. Now, since Marth is pretty sad with Exalted Falchion, Shining Emblem, and Binding Shield, you get a lot of freedom for his other skills. Joint Drive Speed's pretty nice, any speed increase in Seal is fine, and something like Mystic Boost could help with Sustain for just multiple battles. This Marth does have Infantry Flash in his kit, which grants AoE Flashing Blade to Infantry Allies. However, it's kinda ironic that Shining Emblem only buffs attack initially. If you don't have a premium C skill, any smoke debuff is fine since Marth can initiate safely, then apply his debuffs. Of course, Fado, Panic, or Pulse Smoke are fine as well if you can get them. 
Overall, Legend of Marth is extremely happy with this refined and remix boss. Shining Emblem immediately proccing bonus developer for all stats is so nice, and then Marth gets those plus 8 to all stats on the side. With the refine adding unity on the weapon, Marth gets a counter to debuffs and panic in some way. He's still weak to or he's still weaker to panic and lows, but if you regularly debuff Marth, he just goes insane. Now, while lots of stats are nice, Binding Shield 2 is just fantastic. Getting to use it against any unit type is amazing and gives Marth both offensive and some defensive tools. You do need to win those speed checks though, so you can't just throw Marth at every unit out there. Well, some may be wondering who's better between Brave Marth and Legendary Marth. I do think the two are different enough to both be great. Brave Marth has some really nice tricks up his sleeve like a dodge B skill, a one quit on Shining Emblem, and potential vantage from his weapon that it works really well with the distant counter he already has in his kit. And Brave Marth also has that potential for a refine in two years time. I'll be honest, if they start stalling these CBO refines, I would understand because next year Brave Edelgard is supposed to get a refine if we keep the pattern going and that is just kind of nuts. Now, none of this is going to take away from Legend and Mart though. I think easily this is the best refine of this really good batch and I'm extremely happy to have a plus speed Legend and Mart myself. I love him as my insta win pick in Arena Assault versus any Dragon Heavy team. That will be it for this update's refines. Let me know what you think about these units and reminder that Marth and Tiki are gonna be this month's remix banner and that's gonna be or they're gonna be sparkable if you really want them. Be sure to also check out part one if you missed it. This month we had eight refines and we went over Kaze, Linus, Cliff, and Helbindi in the last video. Overall, I would say everyone got something pretty good. The legendaries definitely got some extra perks thanks to their new skills. Now, next up, we have the second ninja banner coming out. I may talk about ninja shimmer first though, we'll see. Either way, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you there.